fellow YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here, and welcome back to another episode of Less Than Reborn. In today's episode, we've of course got FC Porto in the Champions League, really focusing on how well they've done in the last few seasons in Europe, because it's been quite mighty from them. And then on top of that, of course, we will be recapping results from the previous games and of course the following games to show you how we went in the entirety of the league phase. If you are enjoying the content, give it a like to subscribe to the YouTube channel and let me know if you think this will finally be the year after losing the last two Champions League finals uh, of the last two seasons. Uh, hopefully this one is third time lucky like the Cabaret Cup when we win it this year. Without further ado, let's get into it. So since we last met, which was of course Bayern Munich where we won 1-0, we didn't concede a goal for the rest of September, beating Arsenal 3-0, Donny 6-0, Brentford 2-0, Dortmund 6-0, uh, Newcastle 3-0. We drew to Villa to drop our first points in the league 1-1. 4-0 against Dom Graz, 2-1 uh, against Sheffield, 3-0 against Newcastle, 2-0 against Fulham. Villarreal was second when we played and we beat them 2-0. We smashed Manchester United 4-1 and they were lucky it was 4-1 because uh, it really looked like every highlight was going to be uh, a goal. And we just beat Norwich 6-1 with a squad that by half-time, Vélez had a hat-trick, Silva got four assists. And we made sure all the boys were rested and ready to go for this one. With that being said, the team looks outrageously good. Velez missed a penalty in this as well. He is up to 15 pace, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, he's becoming quite world class. What about Arsenal? What might happen. He has got 20 goals in 14 appearances, 27 in 20. He is on track to beat his 59 goal record from last year. If he beats it and we win the Champions League, we will give you another Jorge Luis Velez uh, goal. Uh, you know, compilation video, of course, as well. I said I wouldn't do it, but if he wins the cha if he wins the Champions League uh, for us, I may just do it yet again. What it means is that the game is now recognised that we are the best team in England. No, they've dropped us now from Liverpool, from Leicester to Liverpool. If they did recognise we're the best team in England. Now they're telling us that Liverpool are, which makes no sense. Um, but yeah, Carter, Livermento, Elisa, and Velez are all the teams up here as well. Um, and if you go to the world ranking and you go to Europe and you go to Coefficient, club competition. Uh, there you go, world tab, uh, rankings. Should be up there, rankings or something. No, uh, wherever you go to get coefficient, club list. There you go. Um, this is just England. We're the second best team in England now. If I go by all, we are now Real Madrid, Bayern, Barca, Liverpool, Inter. I think if we go in that sort of list. One, two, three, four, five. We're sixth best team in the world according to the game and just past Man City. So the rise have been quite steep. Um, last year it was Bayern Munich. The year before that was Liverpool. And now Real Madrid are back top. I don't know why. It seems like these three just switch, whichever or these four just switch. Whenever you load it in, that's whatever happens. But yeah, we're the biggest team on the up at the moment being the sixth best team in the world. Uh, with that being said, let's talk about Porto because they've had a pretty fun time of it of late in the Champions League. First things first, doing okay this year. Last year, semi-final got beat by Liverpool over two legs. Pretty solid. Year before that, they made it all the way to the second leg and they lost Liverpool. Mm, happens in this thing. They ran to Liverpool again. The year before that, they made it all the way to the final. That is correct. Knocking out PSG in the semi before losing the Bayern Munich give Bayern first of their two trophies in a row. And I think the year before that, they also went deep as well. But they've been pretty deep. Yeah, quarter final two years before that. So... Porto, if they don't get knocked out by Liverpool in the early stage, generally make the quarterfinals all better, and it's generally one of the big teams that knock them out. They really haven't had a real, you know, big one. And they have won semi-final, and they won it against, um, and they won it. So, yeah, against PSG, and I think they lost the last year's semi-final. But yeah, they're just a really good side. So, look, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see how we go. We are full strength, of course, here for this game as well. Let's just get the bench ready. I, I will have to say is... Uh, Bill Borg is developing this well. Um, you know, when you see that 20 flair and the off-the-ball and the vision and that, you're just like, this kid could be special. We do have some other kids that could be special, though, on the bench. Uh, Masses is getting a new deal. Um, I'm going to bring Ogbu to the bench here, of course, as well. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to drop... I want to bring more to the bench. I want one extra spot. <laughs> Always one extra spot, huh? I'll just drop Mass because he's not 100% and give Moores maybe some minutes as well. Uh, in terms of the team, too, apologies, boys, loans, I need to speak about a couple of things. Kane Fuller's up the three star officially. I told you the game reckons that he was only going to be a two star footballer. Mate, three star, potential to be four star, he could be world class. Do you think Smith Rose days are becoming numbered? Um, important to note Adam Lynch. 
because he's 22, his potential has been locked in at four and a half star, which if he hits that, he's a leading Premier League player and he's developing quite nicely. And lucky last, Mr. Thomas Garcia, even though he did not play for Argentina, got called up for Argentina in the last internationals. He's not too far away. He's already three star. There is definitely a well-ready. He comes back and uh, plays for us as well. So let's get into this, Porto. And then we'll recap all the other results and let you know how we go in the league phase in Jan. And then we can focus more on the knockout stages next time around. Um, with that being said, uh, Velez is the, currently the leading goal scorer in the competition. Um, in terms of the data hub, if you're wondering if we're underscoring our XG, you won't believe me, so I'm just going to show you. Uh, when I say that we are should have had the league already wrapped up, 35 goals... 45 is the expected goals we're meant to score, and it's November. We've already expected to have scored 45 goals in the league. That's how many chances we're missing. I think uh, it's just a case of we're dominating too many sides. But yeah, Assange picked up a knock and is rolling around on the floor behind the goal. He's actually been a little bit underwhelming the last two seasons compared to everyone else. He's just not getting the match rating that you expect from Assange. But, you know, he's been okay. Uh, he seems to have shrugged, shrugged off that knock. If not, we'll just bring Yaya on, and he hasn't because he's now off the pitch. So Yaya does come on. Um, Rochelle Yaya at the moment, by the way, is currently a four-star footballer. Is it getting to the stage where Hassan makes way for Yaya? It might. It may just might. With that being said, Tezzi on the ball into David Carmo, who finds the early ET. He looks for Herrera, doesn't find him. Turam with the ball. Great ball to Velez. He doesn't miss many of these. And, well, to be fair, what defending, defending by Lieti because it was in, apart from that. Andrea Schrupp is out on that side there, or Schrupp, the wonder kid. Galliano and Simone as well is up front. So a pretty good side there from Porto. Ball gets cleared. We've dominated the first 35 minutes, but no goal. Turum with a ball, driving, hits one, and that's going to be over the bar. So far, 36 minutes, it is nil-nil. We've dominated. But uh, fair play to Porto. They've kept it really, really tight. Now, Lamptey is a player everybody will know. is on the ball here. And he's going to go back the line to Tezzi. Smith Rowe misses the tackle. Thankfully, he did because it was a red card challenge waiting to happen. Look the squeeze. Lamptey gets past the gear press. And Galliano, or Galliano, Tezzi, squeezing again. Now this is good from us. Can we win it now on the touch of David Camaro? We don't. Simone drops in really deep there, striker. Herrera now. This might be a goal. Alvaro Fernandez. This is very well worked from Porto. This would be very much against the run of play. Andrea Sherlock, ball, top of the box, headed. Melier with a mistake. We are one nil down. Barring offside. Which, by the fact they're not celebrating, makes me think that there is going to be an offside given. It won't be against the header. I believe it's the guy in front of the keeper, which I always find is harsh. The goal hasn't been given. It's been disallowed. And Stefano is... St what, Stuedo? I can never pronounce his name. Simeone is in a eye line of the keeper, maybe, and it looks like it actually has flicked off him too in the highlight too, so he is definitely off. Um, Stefan is someone that we actually sold on SFB say for 100 mil um, as a defensive midfielder, so have fond memories of him. A couple of good seasons, then we sold him for 100 mil, which was a lot of money in Denmark. But anyway, Skriniar picks this one up, goes back to Melier, back to Skriniar, Tarum drops in, ignored. Now we have to go look second line, so we go long looking for Velez and Elise. It's going to fall to Manuel Ugrate. He finds Velez. We need a goal. Velez doesn't miss too many. And eventually Velez makes it tell. And we do lead 1-0. I will say we have a quite a few bookings out there at the moment as well. So I'm going to just get that off. We've got four bookings out there at the minute. Finally, we go 1-0 up. We've dominated the half. It took an offside scare. But uh, we do lead. Velez scores his eighth goal already in the competition. Uh, fin I think he finished on 21 last year. And still lost player... Uh, you Striker of the year to Haaland. Him and Haaland made dream of team of the year in the Champions League. And lost to Haaland. He only scored, he scored six goals less. Which I could not believe. Anyway. One new up. 45 minutes left to play. And as things stand, it's another win. And uh, we will remain top of the tree. Velez wins this one. Got not much help around. If we score a second, we start thinking about the Coastal Palace game in the league. Yaya... Drives inside. Smith Rowe deflected, cleared. Elise is still there in the box. Can he find a shot? Oh, he will now. You can't give Elise his left peg. The defender stood on his right. Elise said, Well, thank you. I'm rolling you now. And Elise rolls the defender in the middle of next week and puts it in the bucket of the net. And that is 2 0. Some really poor defending here from Porto. I know that Alvaro Fernandez probably should do better there, but he just shows him on his right, left foot and says, Well, okay, I don't want you to go down the line there. 
every day you want him to take his right foot off his left, not his left. And that was pretty poor defending from Porto. With that being said, we are 2-0 up here, 56 minutes played. We've obviously got some big games coming up down the track as well. I am going to bring Skriniar off here for more. I am going to bring Thomas on for Livramento. I am going to bring Elise off for Silva. Borbok on for Smith Rowe. A Borbok in actually out wide. Smith Rowe will go into there. And we're going to go to something like that. Smith Rowe is actually going to go as a bit of an advanced playmaker on support just to play. Might actually get Alex Scott out there. But um, yeah, that's free change. We'll leave two more changes up our sleeve. But there's a few changes there. We'll see what the rest of the team does in terms of fitness. Give a couple of the youngsters some game time. I didn't bring silver on. Sorry, boys. We've got to bring on silver. Silver's going to come in. I'm going to bring on Velez because he's so important for the next game. Um, and Patrick Ogbu has not had many minutes. Reyes plays quite often for me. I'm going to bring Patrick Ogbu on. And I'll bring him off for to run. Oh, apparently, we have no more subs. I prefer to make sure Velez is rested, so we'll do that. Lucas Perry goes long. Only as far as young Moore, who's 18 now. We signed him as a 50 mil centre back at 15. Has he developed? Yeah, but that fractured lower leg really did hurt his development. Carter, though, finds Luke Thomas inside the ball ball. What a touch. What a touch. I know that we have the. We meant to owe a lot to Fuller for loaning him out the last two seasons. We know he's going to be world class. But this billboard guy, every time he plays, just looks incredible on the ball. And I really do think that Smith Rowe, as much as I've loved him, may make way to allow to play Fuller and Bill Bork next season as the two tens that interchange. Could even mean that we lose Alex Scott as well. As time ticks away here, though, that's 3-0. We've looked absolutely dominant. Barring a crazy comeback from Porto, we are going to win again in the Champions League group phase. And Porto, who have been pretty good in Europe the last few years and made this game super interesting, have uh, looked like they're going to go out as that's deflected in Melier's arms. Time ticks away. A few tired legs out there, and we get an injury to Smith Rowe, who we're thinking about bringing on. There we go. That's not good. We're down to 10. Hopefully, uh, not too much more happens here in this game now, now that we're down to 10. Might make a change. Tomori with a tackle. Thomas. Money with you, great. To run. Bill Borg. Needs a runner. That's Silva. He's quick. Will he get there? Oh, it's a mistake. That's a goal. Luca Perry, the keeper with a mistake. Silver scores on his third goal of the year, but he's been getting so many assists as the uh, right winger who's gone up front. It's 4-0. It's probably a little bit cruel, to be fair, to Porto um, as well, this one. But yeah, the keeper could have picked it up. The keeper could have done a lot more things than just that. And there we go. Yeah, all good, Berger. I'm going to be uh, live for a little bit longer than watch the second half of the soccer, for sure. And we'll be keeping an eye on that after this game, of course, as well. Anyway, Tamori on the ball, finds Manuel U, great, finds Tarum, overlapping run there of Carter, was ignored, which, fair enough, he's pretty tired. Now it's just all about, with the 10 men out here, we just keep doing the job. Tarum again, more, Manuel U, great, Silva, good touch. Keeps it with Yaya, looking for a run, here he is again, Yaya in, jinks the keeper, make it 5-0. This is how well class we are, even with 10 men and tired legs, we're still running right against Porto. And uh, Yaya, who's having a, a well-class couple of the last couple of years, is now being tutored as a leading Premier League player, which is borderline world-class. And you great with a great ball. And that is 5-0. That's probably all she wrote here, considering. But it's another highlight. And Yaya whips and more straight at the keeper. First goal of the year on the weekend after the injury. Nice, Berger. Berger's had a long-term injury, for people wondering. Didn't want a blank here. Yeah, always uh, away. You don't want one blank here. For sure, even with a long-term injury. I have to put it in Discord. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the goal after this YouTube episode. Carter now. Goes back a line. Moore. Good to see the youngsters linking up. And Carter and Moore, they'll be here long-term. Carter now. Got not much in front of him, but needs an option. Billboard does well. What a ball. What a ball. Luca Perry makes a save. Deserved to be a goal because Billboard's ball was outrageous. Ball back to Manuel U. Great. Touches in the card. I have a dig some. No, he doesn't. And that's another great save from Perry. The ball inside the yard was superb and the hit was great. Could have been six. We are scintillating at football. And 5-0 uh, in the Champions League. 
Always good to see. Bill Bork again in a yaya. And Esther Quinio or Stefan does well. Time ticks. There's one more minute left on the clock for one last highlight. It would be very cruel on us to concede, to be fair. But if it happens, it happens. Capoldo going on a run. Still going. Hits it over the bar. That's going to be all she wrote. By the time this comes back into play, this is it. Half an hour left on the clock. Half an hour. 30 seconds left on the clock. Half a minute. And yeah, to rum. Manuel Ugrate. Yaya. Picked off. Should be it. 15 seconds. Are we going to concede with our last chance? Lamar was offside. It's all she wrote. A five-star performance equals a 5 0 win. Let's hope Assad and Smith Rowe aren't out long term. If they are, then yeah, we'll see what we'll do. And uh, there we go to rum. Bill Bork. All she wrote. 5 0. Boys played sensational. Let's hope these injuries aren't long term. And then we'll be back, obviously, at the end of the league phase to let you know where we finish. By the looks of it, it could be top. But let's see what we can do here. Let's see these injuries. Smith Rowe is out for three to four weeks with a twisted ankle. No good, but we'll leave him to the physio. And Hassan is out for one to two days with that tight calf muscle as well. Boys look good. Not selling Lewis Gilhome Silver for anything, uh, for sure. Need to put one or two in front of those digits. And as things stand, we are flying in the league. We're flying in the Champions League. And I'll see you guys in a second at the end of the league phase to recap the results. YouTube, welcome to the end of episode 57. We're about to recap what's happened here in the rest of the Champions League league phase. It's also deadline day. Episode 58 is not a deadline day special, but it is a special because I've sold someone for a lot of big money and you want to check that out. Secondly here, I'm on deadline day. and We've actually just sold uh, Stavro for big money to Man United for 55 mil guaranteed, 58 mil if he plays 50 games. That is 17 mil or 20 mil up front now. And then they're giving me 36 or 38 mil over the next two seasons are guaranteed. Every 12 months, they're going to pay me uh, half that figure. It's a really big bid. I didn't want to do it, but, um, you know, as much as he's been good for me and he's well-rounded, he's not going to be world-class. And I think this is the point that we're at, at the say that kids like this, as much as they're good and they're great, unless they're homegrown for the football club and they only spent one year here as a junior, we have to go profit, buy. For those wondering, we bought him in for 8.75 mil plus a player exchange. That was off, uh, That's what was offered to us, or we offered out. Um, and with that being said... Uh, you know, he's played okay. He's played, He's been fine. Uh, I really liked him this year. Uh, don't get me wrong. But um, we rejected 50-odd mil for Lavia, who's a world-class DM to go to United. So to get 50 mil for then my third... Look, he's sixth choice, right? Because you've got... In the midfield right now, you've got Tarum and you... Um, Tarum and you great. So Ray is a new great. You've got Tiar Tarum and Lavia. And then for me, Ogbu, who I'm going to talk about in a second, is the next guy, Right? So then Stravro's there. The only reason we kept Stravro around is we needed someone to play right back and train to play right back because we sold Zand and our potential future right back for people that don't remember we've signed a 17-year-old that hasn't moved for whatever reason yet um, is, uh, yeah, coming in at the end of this season to learn to play right back and will become homegrown for the Champions League and the Premier League and he's that well-rounded that he's going to be fantastic in the future. So, you know, he's in gym. So we only need someone for six months. And what my plan is here, after talking it with chat, because we're, of course, live again, is we're going to train Ogbu, even though he's naturally left-footed to play right back, um, because he's so well-rounded. He's got 10 crossing, which will be his worst start, and he gets up and down. And what it means for Ogbu, who's been struggling for minutes this year in the Prem, right, and he's played the occasional game, it means now he can sit on my bench every game, and games that are really, really easy, you just bring him on. And for the games that we rotate in, we can put him at right back and he's good enough to learn, develop, and off we go. It also means that down the track, it's having a defensive midfielder that can play right back and I've actually trained him to play left back, as you can see, I've already started doing that. It'll just mean more rotation option down the track because I think Ogbu's going to eventually be one of the two with, I know Manuel Ugrate's great, but Reyes is, well, this good um, and only getting better. And I think Ogbu and Reyes will be eventually the future two DMs of this side. With that being said, let's go recap what's happened here since we last met, which of course was for the Porto game. We have sold a player for 196 million, and uh, you want to check that out, you know, 276 million in the budget, you check out the next episode because it happened out the blue. I was going to film it as part of this episode, it's got its own episode because it's so good. Uh, what we did after Porto, we beat Milan 2 1, as you can see here in the league phase. Uh, played okay, not great. Got a late winner with Luke Thomas. It doesn't score many. 
Um, we beat the Red Star 4-0 with a fully rotated tide. But Strubberu did uh, get a goal, but Ogbu got a goal and an assist and really proved how good he is. And he played right back for me that day. And at right back, got an 8.9. Um, and we drew to 0-0 uh, to OJ Nice with a, a semi-rotated side, or mostly rotated side, as you can see there. But when Taram, Lavia, Linus, Sue, and Thomas, and Melier, but more Linus, is playing with your backup, and Lavia and Taram are pretty good. For those wondering how Lynch is going, by the way, um, and uh, that'll make more sense why he is back uh, next episode. Um, yeah, he's not been great, but um, that's fine. In terms of other results as well, we lost to the Premier League Liverpool, 2-0 uh, away from home. We then beat them 2-1 at home. Uh, we got Bournemouth in the quarterfinal, or the semifinal of the Cabaret Cup, but we just won 4-1 at home, 1-1 away, so we got the final against West Ham, who knocked out Manchester United, um, which... Look, I always say this is going to be next episode. I always end up putting an FA Cup fifth round on that weekend and push this back in between two Champions League games. So probably be the Champions League. Uh, but, you know, it, it's something we'll keep an eye on when that falls. Uh, other results, FA Cup, we beat Norwich. And uh, outside losing to Liverpool, we've won every other game as well in the league, which means if you look at the league table to end off, 27 games played, 25 wins, one draw, one loss, 76 points. Very similar to last year. And like last year, once we pretty much mathematically going to get there, we'll, you know, I don't think we're going to give away 16 points here to Liverpool and uh, to United. Um, what I will say is, uh, at some stage, we'll, we'll focus on the Champions League because it's the competition we need to win. We'll start dropping games in the league, of course, as well. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the end of this episode. Definitely watch episode 58, which will come out tomorrow, because that's when we sold someone for $196 million. And yes, I've never had $196 million. Um... A little bit of a teaser. It is one of, uh, let's go one of five players that it could be. It could be Elise, it could be Velez, it could be Silva, it could be Hassan, and it could be Manuel Ugrate. One of those world-class players has left the squad for 196 million. Check next episode to find out who it is. Till next time, thank you very much. Have a great day and goodbye.